take it. If they offer me a milkshake, I'll take it. Uh, sometimes they offer $10 of foie gras, and I go, sure. I was surprised you didn't get a milkshake today. I think they had milkshakes. I, some milkshake it it tempted place. me, but I was more, you know, it was, uh, was kind of early for me, too. I felt more like a copy. <laughs> now, Alex, I, I'd, say, I'd say Kevin McAllister would agree with you on the pizza uh, front. And uh, so, such a weird specific. <laughs> I don't even remember that part of any of these Home Alone movies where a plain cheese pizza was. You you just say it now and you and it doesn't ring a bell. He loved plain cheese pizzas. He comes down and is like, "Where's my where's my cheese pizza?" And then uh, Buzz says like, "Oh, we ate it all, but here I can oh, barf yeah, some up for yeah, you or something." Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, and that causes that 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 moment. I that think trigger is basically the, whole the rest thing. of the movie because mm. the milk spills because he pushes Buzz. Oh yeah, the passports get chopped to the garbage. Uh, no, 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 the microwave, microwave, yeah. but one, but Kevin McAllister's gets put into the garbage. And uh, for years, it has just devastated the family. I imagine it scarred uh, young Kevin McAllister, too, uh, being left behind uh, in consecutive years, I imagine, uh, from a family vacation. Yeah. But, you know, he gets his cheese pizzas, and I think it, it worked out better for him. His fa- you know, his not only his brother, his entire family were just a bunch of trout sniffers. <laughs> Speaking of Christmas movies, Matthew... <laughs> Uh, you once, uh, when all three of us were in high school, wrote probably a good 45-minute or hour-long uh, Christmas movie. Christmas special length. Christmas, Christmas like television special length uh, film where uh, Alex was the star of the picture. Uh, I was uh, cast as the villain of Christmas. And uh, I believe the title of this movie was The Handsome Christmas. It does ring a bell, uh, and I, I don't remember all parts of this. The only thing I really do remember was Alex had a fascination with yogurt at the time, and so that was a key part <laughs> of the plot. And right away, you know, the you know little little synapses start firing. And it's it's uh, Alex of yogurt. That's 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 an hour and a half movie easy. <laughs> um, but it was basically because you had a character that uh, would always say it was yogurt time when people would ask you what time it was. Can we hear it again? It's a yogurt time. There we go. There we go. Uh, variations on that even. And pretty much your whole character was going to sound like that. His name was going to be Louis. Um, oh, yeah. We and you were just going to be the most handsome person in town. And I don't remember the plot past that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's spotty. I know that you had written out probably four or five songs. Like you'd figured it out with to music. It was a musical that you you'd written a Christmas musical, yeah. And even since then, I feel like this may have been uh, coming out of uh, one of our, our our conversations on the phone back in the day, where I was saying this is this is how you make money. You make a Christmas <laughs> special. They're going to play it every year, mm-hmm. yeah. And you collect the dividends, <laughs> dividends, dividends, dividends. They both they both yeah sound good. You're collecting it. And, um, <laughs> no, no, I'm not. <laughs> well, no, because we never actually produced this movie. We did a read through, you and I. But we did a read through, um, but part of the problem was we couldn't get everyone in the Christmas spirit after Christmas, and there wasn't enough snow to shoot before Christmas. Long story short, the movie never got made. I'll tell That's you. why you need a, a, a sound studio and fake snow. That's why all these Christmas movies have fake snow. Yeah, another exactly. unrealized track for productions. Yeah. <laughs> Flash cat as it was registered, <laughs> um, and I still get bills in the mail. <laughs> Do you really? Later, I mean, like... You registered a f- production company that never produced anything. Yeah, I believe we come up with a nice little logo for it. it was Track Four on based on the fact that you felt that Track Four best album of any album, uh, best track of any album. Yeah, um, and uh, so y- you paid to register this company. This production company as like an eighteen year old and never produced anything with it. Yeah, every year they're like twenty bucks. Are and you paying uh, it every year? No, no. Oh. But I keep well, getting. We, we produced the trifecta of films, right? That's well, true. Or one That's of them, true. the first of the Planned Three. Right. The and there's, Planned there's Matt, Man, and Steve. Yeah. That's the, right. You guys never had your role in there. I think the scheduling, there was scheduling conflict. Yeah, there was the, there was supposed to be a crossover with that one. It yeah. wasn't there. But I think this maybe is getting, the third. This is getting really in the weeds. <laughs> it's true, it's true. I don't Let, know if we have this video on YouTube or something. We can maybe link it in the show notes. <laughs> it may be up there with no audio. Uh, <laughs> uh, but let's 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 back up a little bit. Uh, I think for the Christmas film, uh, I did film a little bit of it. I did shoot a little bit of that on uh, on high eight. Uh, quickly got shut down. The first scene, I decided. <laughs> 
that needed to be shot was uh, kids playing in the park. Oh gosh. Yeah. Well, it was just it was like a, just to set the mood. Just some B-roll. Yeah, and right away it ran into complications, angry parents and stuff, and <laughs> I, you know I'm just some guy filming their kids in a park, but it yeah. only needed like 15 seconds. I couldn't even get that. So if I if I can't get 15 seconds for B-roll, how are you? How are you doing it? That 15 seconds of, of footage, you 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 got caught in. Were you, were you wearing related. clothes as your as your? Well, I had to hide the camera too. I was wearing. Like, so so was it a it was it a, a trench coat? Is that what was going on? <laughs> I don't think I was that shady, but uh, I had some, some... I mean, you were also like 18. I feel like it probably was 17, 18. It probably wasn't that creepy. Well, I must have had no. long hair, though. That's Real true. You hair. did have a beard and long hair at yeah. that time. But uh, but it was... You were the villain. And I was your, the villain. And your goal was to steal his handsomeness. Yes, I believe I had. Uh, I was like a wealthy villain who wanted to ruin everyone's Christmas. Uh, and how was I going to do that? By stealing uh, a Louis's uh, handsomeness. And gifts? I don't know. It was like it was. A, I feel like the the villain's plot was pretty uh, ambiguous. Everybody's everybody's plot was just real weak <laughs> because like it was basically they were all written after uh, they were just caricatures of themselves in real life. And I remember That's Kevin right. Robitaille's character was, was just a character who would run in and yell out that they had to had to party, they had to liven up the mood, and he would just start smashing plates. <laughs> uh, He's been typecast. That's not fair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but I do, I do, uh, I do remember the ending, and I really enjoyed the ending where you finally save Christmas. I think, uh, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, uh, when I when I have captured Alex and yeah. put him in my handsome extracting machine. <laughs> He broke it. He overloaded it. Oh, he was too handsome. He was too handsome. Yeah, Yeah, they they never foresaw, you know, uh, a face so rugged, a face so finely chiseled. And technology wasn't wasn't there yet. It was was still the early 2000s. The technology wasn't there yet. They didn't have the processing power. I think it sets it it up for a sequel. But but I remember the, I think the last line was something about, something about how you save Christmas. Like, you must be... You know, ecstatic, very happy. All your friends are around, your family, and then just zooms in on your head, so it's kind of like in your mind, and it's just empty. And then you just start hearing yourself singing "Louis, Louis, oh, oh," and because your name is Louis, and you would constantly be playing that song in your head. If if we can track down this script again, I think we should probably do this as a radio play and release it around the holidays. There's there's like. Fourteen we, scripts basically, floating out there. Basically, every everyone it's a huge would be, cast. Is it? it was it's a pretty a sprawling cast, cast, but I feel like we could get everyone in here to record their bits and then assemble it in, in post. Oh, that would be amazing. Maybe without the songs, because that might be a little too much work. But uh, we'll we'll work on it. If anybody out there who was part of the original cast of the Handsome Christmas still has their copy, uh, you know, send us an email. <laughs> I'll I'll look through my files. I might have something. Okay. Uh, and Your if so, files. What kind of files? Like I'm just paper files? files? I'm just saying. I, I mean, there's no, drawers. I'm just talking <laughs> drawers. There's no digital copy. It's it's, it's got to be in paper. Uh, um, uh, but yeah, maybe we could produce that as a holiday special for the listeners. I think that'd be a very nice thing. I feel that's a warming your heart already, Matthew. We got to get people. People live in Iowa right now, I believe. Who the hell's in there? Iowa? I don't know. Isn't Erin in Iowa? She's in the was she in the somewhere. cast? She was. Man, sprawling cast. <laughs> people nobody knows unless oh yeah it yeah. wasn't an all-star cast it was just a big cast yeah, so. I mean, it was the biggest celebrity Johnny Knoxville wasn't that. in this production <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's a star still right he's a star that might be in Iowa is that where we're going there? he's a star we can afford oh, okay 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 <sighs> so, so back to the burger uh, sure I don't have very much okay hold on I don't have much more on my list I'm just going to read it like bullet points, anything I haven't said. <laughs> All right. Let's fire through it. It's actually – no, I don't have much. All I have was Alex is very sad watching a goofy movie. I don't know why that came into my <laughs> It's into a my sad head. movie. That's why. It was a very sad movie. You, I think you, you, you didn't cry, but you were felt really emotional when yeah. Max threw the possum out the yeah. window. Yeah. By the why way, it, was, it took me – Why was that the moment that would be emotional? Because Max is 
when Max walks away from Goofy. And he's like, oh, you, it's not just the ruin the everything. Yeah, and, yeah, and okay. Walks yeah, away there's the a ring. certain father son uh, yeah. uh, emotion to that part of the relationship. I get that. Okay, single sorry. dad. Yeah, you know, trying yeah. to do his best. You know, it took. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm proud to say or not, but it took me about two seconds to recognize that Powerline song a couple of weeks ago in the intro. <laughs> To one of the episodes. I, I wish I had saved it for this episode. But, <laughs> I, but uh, at that time, I didn't have the internet, and the one that Sebastian had suggested, I did not have in my uh, cat- catalog of <laughs> music. Uh, <laughs> Just uh, power line. S- speaking of that power line song, uh, if I rec- recall correctly, Alex, I believe that was uh, your go-to stripping song for a while. <laughs> oh, yeah, I go I back to Alex's stripping. <laughs> oh phase. my! Now wasn't it? Uh, wasn't it? You could keep your hat on. I don't even sure. know what well, that maybe, song is. Maybe, you know, Joe Cocker, you can keep your hat on. I do have a video. No, doesn't doesn't ring any bells. It's not ringing a bell. I have a video of you stripping to that song, <laughs> particularly in Kevin Robitaille's basement. And you would specifically and, keep at only a hat on. Yeah, yeah the hat uh, was covering. It was, an, it was an act. Yeah, you know, yeah. it, was, it wasn't just an animal taking his clothes off. No, no, no. <laughs> you, yeah, you weren't just tearing your clothes off. It was a show that you had... Performed enough times, <laughs> it, yeah. it, uh, it came to perfection. It was choreaf- choreographed. My poor mother, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, where's this going? Uh, <laughs> pictures were taken oh, at, these, at these at uh, <laughs> oh, these. Oh gosh, parties. Uh, oh, never anything going. like terrible. But there was, a, I believe, a picture of you stripping. There's a picture of uh, Adam <laughs> Duran, for some reason, completely naked, but covering himself mm-hmm. with his hand. Mm-hmm. Um, Probably both his hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys. Uh, and this is all one roll of film, and I used to get my mom to go and develop the film for me, one hour photo at Walmart. <laughs> and <laughs> she she told me later, um, when she came home, that she got very strange looks from <laughs> the clerks at the <laughs> photo place because they're essentially looking at every picture as it goes through, and then they just see... I'm surprised. Some borderline child uh, pornography, basically. They were 15, 16, and I'm surprised now that uh, she got out of there without the police being called because I looked at those pictures. It was a simpler time. (laughs) Gone are the days (laughs) when you could just go to Walmart and develop child pornography. (laughs) Thank God for digital photography. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So so that's that's the story. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Your mother's is name, her name Debbie? Is that Mike remember correctly? No, it's Susan. Su- I'm sorry, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if she ended up looking at the pictures to see what the strange looks were about or if I had to tell her later. But So she came home with an envelope, handed this to you, and was like, I don't know what's in here, <laughs> but I got some weird looks. It's like, I'm not developing your photos anymore. <laughs> oh. From from then on, you managed to get uh, school money from the yearbooks, uh, <laughs> the yearbooks coffers to uh, develop all of your photos. Yeah, they're still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Eleven years later, is this... they don't even take photos on film anymore, but <laughs> still doing it. Is that is that true? Uh, is LTM still paying for your development of photos of film? Well, no, but uh, oh, for years, were a couple of years, for years though. they did. I believe that was Kevin Robitaille's only uh, reason for joining the yearbook. The film was expensive. To I develop. forgot he was even part of the yearbook. That's how little he actually <laughs> did for the yearbook, other than take personal photos that he had developed by the school and, and jump into the room and say it's time to party and start smashing plates. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, now, Matthew, uh, as a side note here, I was discussing this yesterday, and I thought about you because you are uh, uh, a big fan of potatoes. You're a potato man. You eat many potatoes in any given week. Mm. Um, how do you make a potato, Matthew? And when I say that, I don't mean... How do you prepare it? There's no potato seeds. There isn't a potato tree that you pick the potatoes off of. Don't potatoes grow as individuals? I mean, I, my fascination with potatoes occurs you know, after they've been plucked from the dirt. Um, and that's really where I start focusing on them. I don't know. Like they, You have to pull them out of the ground. They're plants, right? They're like uh, radishes, aren't they? But maybe... So how do you make more potatoes if... Do you plant a potato? I think you plant a potato if I learned anything so from the So isn't that just a one-to-one? One? If you plant a potato and oh. you grow a potato, how do you ever have more than one potato? You know, this is. I wish I could have done some research, but I'm pretty sure they, they spread out. I'm pretty sure you get multiple spuds. Because, like, isn't when a potato gets old and it starts getting those little eyes and they spread out, aren't they just 
Turning into a potato plant? I thought that was the roots of the potato. I think you could cut up a potato into pieces, and oh. each piece of potato could grow That kind of makes potato. sense. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Because I'm it's thinking... Mystery solved. <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, I've we've been living 30 years on this planet. I don't even know how a goddamn potato works. <laughs> yeah, potatoes, what, they're like batteries, too. They can do stuff. 